Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the new MN82 Toyota. Uh, picked two of these up from Banggood for around $126 shipped. Took quite a while, probably about a month to get it. But I got to say, it was well worth the wait. This body is fantastic. I think this is probably the best body around for these little smaller scale uh, trucks. I mean, it is just, I mean, the detail on this truck is really, really fantastic. Unbelievable. The body itself is worth the price of the truck, to be honest with you. I mean, you could do, if you don't want to mess with the uh, the MN running gear, I'm sure you could do something with it. I mean, this is a really nice scale body. So, I'm a, I'm a sucker for these little trucks. I have a lot of everything, but I don't know what it is about these little ones. Uh, I think it's because maybe they're not that great out of the box and it's kind of fun to get them to actually perform well. Eh, I don't know. Anyhow, so this truck here is a giant leap forward from these first MND 90s. Even the newer one over here the this here mn99 d99 i can't remember the name of it anyhow it's a newer version of this this is the first one of these that come out this truck is just leaps and bounds over top of these now uh this, the electronics no they're not that great yet but they're a lot better than they used to be. And I mean, it's actually usable for a time period. This truck here, I've upgraded to the um, 30 amp uh, WPL ESCs. These will run 3S. This, here's a picture of it out of the package. Right here. These are nice little ESCs. I think they're about $12, $13, somewhere in that range. Uh, but they work really well. They have a uh, drag brake that you can enable or disable. There's a little, yeah, it's kind of like the uh, Hobby Wing 1060s where you pull and switch the pin around. Well, it's, it's right here. You have to... Uh, Cut a little bit of the shrink wrap away to get to it, but this is where it's at. And you just move it over, and then you have drag brake or no drag brake. It works really well. But that's the first thing I did to this truck after I ran a little bit just to see, you know, what it would be like. I put the uh, WPL 30 amp ESC in it. I run it on 3S because I wanted to see what was going to break. And so far, the only thing that, the only issue I've had with it is the dog bones. Now, you can look, at, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it to you. No, I can't see it on this one. Oh yeah, right there. I don't know if you can see in there, see that little bit of uh, brass right there. That is the update that they've done for these dog bones now i don't know whether they're not on right from the factory or what but this is a newer mn model here too it's the mn 78 and it does not have the brass on the dog bone but it's like a brass sleeve and this this is the original mn axles here they're plastic 
plastic dog bones. The newer dog bones on the MN78 and the MN82 have a metal pin to where this plastic is that goes through, which is much better. But the problem I had with the new MN82 was I'm running it on 3S and I'm running it through the rocks and I'm noticing that the left front wheel isn't turning. So, I ended up, I took the whole front axle apart, and that brass sleeve is mounted right here at the very end. And they have the shaft with flats on each end, and the, uh, the plastic dog bones that slide on. They're actually keyed with a flat inside of them, so they, they should lock in place. Well, this actually cracked. So I took everything apart, and I was able to get it off because it was cracked. It just slid right off. So I took and I put it in my vise this way. And I took a flathead screwdriver, a little small flathead screwdriver, and I pushed the brass bushing down as far as I could get it. And what that did was that that tightened everything up. So I did that on the other side as well. Hold on one second, please. So, okay, I'm back. I pushed the uh, brass sleeve down as far as I could get it on both sides. And then I reinstalled both dog bones back on, keyed to where they should be. And they are super, super tight now. They don't want to spin. The, the uh, cracked one, you can't move it. It's, it's really tight. Now, is this as good as uh, a metal axle from from WPL uh, where everything uh, bolts together? And if you do it right with the Loctite, it, it holds up very nicely. Probably not. But it's way far better than this was. Because this is just terrible. These pins would snap off. These would just start spinning. This plastic gear would strip. It, it was just. And then not to mention the electronics in these early ones. I mean, you couldn't even get it to climb over a pebble. This actually, with the stock electronics, actually doesn't do too bad. It's got the high and low range, which is really not a high and low range. It's just two different speeds. And that's with the throttle rate button on here right here, this button. It just gives you the two speeds. It really doesn't. You're not really getting low range. It has to do with gears, and that doesn't do anything with the gears. But this truck, is, so far, with the upgrades I've done to it so far, has been a lot of fun. It does amazingly well. Can't believe how well it does. So the next thing I've done to this is the wheels may look the same, but they're not. And these are WPL C34, C44 wheels with the WPL version 1 soft kit tires. And this truck is very nose heavy. And I noticed that it would climb very well going uphill. But coming back, Downhill, it would just want to endo. Just there's no weight in the back. So what I ended up doing, I experimented a little bit. I put had weight in the front wheels and weight in the back wheels, and I'd weight just in the front. And what I found is with the weights in the back, foams in the front, it crawls really, really well and descends hills really well now. 
before it, if you would let off the throttle too soon and the drag brake would kick in, it would just boop. And uh, now it just descends the hill nice and smooth, no problem. So another thing I want to talk about on these is I kind of thought, okay, when you get this, it's got leaf springs on it, and then it's got shocks and springs on the back. And I thought to myself, oh, why do I need these? Why, why, why should these be here? So I took them off. Well, it worked good for a while, but these things are kind of like, these leaf springs are kind of like, uh, like a TF2. They break in a little bit. Well, you kind of need these shocks and springs on the back to keep it where it needs to be. It also helps with the axle wrap. Um, it, without the shocks and the springs on it, it'll kind of want to give you axle wrap. So I ended up putting them back on and I put them on, you know, they have adjusters on them, as you can see in here. You know, it's kind of hard to see, but there's adjusters on them, like, like a regular oil-filled threaded shock. Well, I had them all the way up at first, and I kept running it, running it, running it. So you actually have to keep winding these down until the, the springs break into where they're going to be, and then it'll, it'll work really well. So the next thing that's coming up for this truck is going to be, I have metal gears for the transmission coming. I have metal drive shafts coming for it. And I do believe that that's the last two things I'm going to do to this truck for now. It's, uh, it's going to be a good trail truck. So it's going to be, it does pretty good in the rocks, but with the leaf springs, it doesn't do anywhere near as well. As like a link truck would do. I mean, this thing, this WPL here I built, it just walks right through the rocks like there's nothing there. Now, the MN, it, it doesn't do bad. It does okay. And it does a lot better than it did when it was stock on the, uh, the regular tires that come with it. These things are really hard really slippy slippery i should say not slippy that's a pennsylvania thing slippy but anyhow these tires look nice but they don't work very well now i bought two of these because when these when these first come out there's usually no parts available so i always try to buy two like when the mn78 come out I bought a blue one and I bought a silver one. I got them both at the same time. That way, if something breaks on one of them, I got another one I can take the part off until I can order the part because, you know, it's going to take you probably three to four weeks to get the part you need from AliExpress or Banggood or eBay. And it takes a little while before Amazon starts getting stuff to where you can get it, you know, in a week. Now. When you open the box, you're going to get a bag of parts. In here, you've got some lenses. Oh, that's by the way. That's another thing I did. Uh, usually, like the Delta WPLs, they'll give you little decals for your for your lighting. Well, there's no decals for your lighting on this. They give you some stripes. That's all they give you. But uh, there's no there's no decals for the lights for the lenses. So. What I did with this was, uh, I can see, I used the uh, Tamiya transparent amber and red and painted these up. They come out pretty good like that. I even did the uh, marker light here on both sides. But you'll get uh, the snorkel. Get some more trim parts here, mirrors, tailgate handles, 
Uh, these are for behind the doors. And then you also get, um, you get Toyota album, because this is fully licensed by Toyota. And then you get an MN emblem. So, I don't know. I think most people are going to go for the Toyota emblem. I would think, anyhow. That's what comes in the box and the remote, which, you know, it'll get you by with the stock electronics. I changed mine over to uh, my Fly Sky for the yellow one. But as I move on, when I start working on the, uh, the red one over there, I'm going to do a video of putting the ESC in and um, whatever else is going to happen to this truck is going to happen to that truck. Same exact thing. Metal gears in the transmission, uh, metal drive shafts. Same tire and wheel combo, probably. Not not sure yet. It's regardless. It's going to have um, the weight in the back, like this one does. Foams in the front. I have another set of these tires, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to use the same tires. They work really well. Um, <laughs> I think that's about it uh, for today for this for this video. Um, I'm going to do another video. Hopefully tomorrow, outside, it should be a nice enough day I can get outside. Because I want to get some running video of the modified, how it's modified so far. And the completely stock, stock one over here. So you can see the differences in how the electronics work. Um, a lot of people saying, uh, I've seen a few people hanging out with the MN78 and now these. The 260 motor doesn't have enough power. Well, eh, it doesn't with the stock electronics. Now, with the um, 30 amp uh, 3S ESC in this, there's more than enough power for this truck with the smaller 260 motor in it. I see no no real reason to upgrade to a 370 motor unless you're going to run the stock electronics yeah i could probably see it but running a 3s battery in this with a 260 motor it's it's really really fun so hopefully tomorrow i can uh get outside and get you some running video of these two trucks you know stock and modified and See what you guys think. I know so far, I really like this thing. It's really, really scale. I mean, this is a... It's, for the price, you cannot beat this. the body for on this truck. You, you just can't beat it. It's just really, really nice. I'm pretty sure that's about all I want to talk about today about these trucks. Um, can't really think of anything else. Uh, it's going to get, uh, the interior is going to get painted in this, uh, some sort of a tan color. Probably the same thing in the red one, a tan color, and all detailed out. And it's going to get some scale accessories here and there. Uh, I'm not too sure about what I'm going to do about lights. I think I might just leave them off because the only lights you get on this truck are the headlights when it comes stock. And if you look in the back here, there's really, there's no buckets, and there's really no way to put anything in there. There's no room. The frame sits pretty much right up against, right up against them, and there's really no way to uh, put anything in there. So I think I'm probably just gonna leave this without lights and uh, enjoy it that way. Oh, that's another pretty cool thing too. Um, I don't know if you can see this or not. It comes with a little um, reflector, reflective glass that goes in the in the mirror. It's a nice little detail. Oh, that's another thing I also do with this. Um, I went ahead and painted the Toyota. I tried to get you know look on these online and see what was painted what, what colors and stuff. So I'm gonna try to keep it authentic. As I can. 
But uh, hey, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, please like, sub subscribe. Uh, like I said before, I got lots coming, and there's, there's a lot coming, trust me. So, hey, you all have a good day, and I will see you again next time.